So today we're going to build a water tower. One of the, my biggest anxieties with the homestead project was uh, right away getting a, a reliable water source where we could uh, supply water for our family and have enough water to irrigate our garden in an off-grid uh, scenario. In other words, not relying on any grid power electricity pumps whatsoever. That was one of my number one priorities. So I built the ram pump, which is pumping water up here and has worked really well. However, as the summer has uh, drug on and the water levels are, are get lower and lower, the ram pump uh, cannot supply enough water uh, for, or, or for, the wa for the garden because it, there's just not enough water in the spring. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be putting up a 500 gallon water tower. So this way we can allow the ram pump to pump up all night long, 24 hours a day, fill this reservoir and then draw down upon it the garden will draw down upon it and then we will not have a water shortage. So water tower is the project for today. So here's the tank that we'll be putting up on the top of the tower today. This is a 500 gallon poly tank. It measures about 48 inches at the bottom and five feet high. I've been looking for one of these for a long time on Craigslist looking to get a deal because the new ones are so expensive. I've seen them anywhere from 700 to 1100 dollars brand new for for similar tanks like this. And we'll start with a 500 gallon, but uh, the water tower will be designed to have two of these. So I'll just keep my eyes open and one, next time one comes up on Craigslist, we'll snap that up and plug it in also. I thought long and hard about what is the best way to build a water tower. Obviously at water at roughly 8 pounds a gallon times 1,000 gallons is, is a ton of weight. And so it needs a pretty strong structure to support that. And I thought about timber framing one or building one out of wood. And, you know, started working on the plans and it's, it's actually you're kind of expensive and, and it's got to be really heavy duty and a lot of work to build a water tower. Got to thinking more and more and uh, what I came up with is this heavy duty double reinforced pallet racking. And it's galvanized. I found this off of Craigslist. I got a whole bunch of it. I've got some of it in my shop, but I saved these two tall pieces here because I thought this is going to make an ideal water tower. One thing is it's really strong, it's galvanized, so it's never going to uh, corrode. It'll last as long as we need it, and it will be able to support the tremendous weight. So what we're doing right here is uh, we'll be putting it up against the building, and the reason for that is uh, it, it kind of hides the tower from the house, and I can uh, secure it to the side of the building so we don't have to worry about it tipping over. But I think this is going to be just ideal and uh, a great way to get this water tower up off the ground. Here I've got the first leg of the tower set up and all I've done is I've put about six inches of compacted gravel in there and then I've got an old piece of PT pressure treated uh, 2x8. Pressure treated when you see that what that means is that's uh, wood that uh, is that will not rot away or it'll, it'll take a long time for it to rot away it's treated with a chemical. So if you ever do have to put something on the ground, a bottom plate in the house, anything that's going to come in contact with earth or moisture, pressure tree is what you want to use. And then having the gravel underneath of it is, is a double benefit because that helps to drain water away from it. So we have a little bit of a slope here and the next leg which is going to be nine feet, it'll be nine feet apart, will be down here. So we're working on that right now. We'll build up a little bit of cribbing and uh, get that second leg up. You know, one thing you can do to preserve wood if you don't want to spend the money on pressure treat or don't have any and just want to use stuff you have around the barn or the shop is you can uh, save your used motor, motor oil when you change your oil. Just get a couple of uh, milk jugs, rinse them out when you're done using them, and keep a couple gallons around in the shop and paint this on with a paintbrush. All sides really good, and if you do that every three or four years, that even regular wood on ground contact will last a long, long time. Starting to put the cribbing in on the right hand side over there, which is going to support the weight of the second leg of the tower. As you can see, we have a gradual slope right here, so we need to build that section up. I could have dug down over here to match that, but I don't want to lose that 16 inches or so. I want to get that water up tank up there as high as possible. So uh, using some pressure treated 6x6s and some pressure treated 4x4s, we, uh, I'll build some cribbing and uh, s support that. I'm not getting real carried away with the base of this using concrete or pier pads and such because I know how I am and I sometimes I need to put something up and just kind of look at it and I usually oftentimes end up changing it. So I want it, this to be strong and to last uh, for years and years in case I don't change it but um, that's kind of why I'm not using concrete and just uh, doing it temporarily but temporarily well.
A grade laser is really nice to use uh, when, you have to, when you have to get elevations just right. This machine right here, this is an old timer, I've had it forever, uh, but what it does is it sends out a, a laser that's perfectly flat, 360 degrees. And over there on the grade rod you can see the receiver. So that what that will tell me is I can set my laser at the grade at the top of this pad, bring it over here and match it. It helps me to uh, make sure that everything is uh, on the up and up. You like the industrial look at it? It's your garden. Yeah. Got a little bit too close to the bar. So I finally got the framework together. Man, that stuff is heavy, hard to work with. So this is sitting right over top of Mrs. Wrangler Star's composting boxes. So what I'll do is uh, I'll remove that cross brace right there so it doesn't hinder her work. I'll leave the one in the back just for support. And then I've got the two sections right there in the top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill that up, uh, that whole top with uh, two by fours laying on end so it'll be really strong. And then we'll throw that tank up there. So the tower is all uh, plumbed and what? installed. I've got the deck on the top where the water tanks are going to sit. And what I did uh, for strength is I took a two by fours, as you can see there, and they're laid on end. And there's a whole bunch of them across there. You know, and I, 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 I could have bought something that would have been maybe looked a little bit cleaner, but I'm trying to use what I have around here. You know, you can. It's, I got to get out of the mindset when I need something just to go to Home Depot and just buy it. Uh, when uh, there's ways that I can make do and use things around here that I have and this is a good example of that. So that obviously is going to need to be uh, protected from weather. So what I'm going to do here is I've got some heavy duty roof felt. This is a paper that's impregnated with tar and uh, it looks pretty trashy if you can see it. I wouldn't want that anywhere where I could see it from the house or have to look at it all the time. But up there on top of the tank I'll staple it down with stainless staples and uh, put a couple layers on it and that will help protect that uh, untreated wood up there from uh, from rotting out and it'll last a little bit longer. And the tar paper. So we're uh, putting uh, two layers of this heavy duty roofing felt up here and stapling it down then we'll put the tank on top of this. So it'll just, it'll, uh, it's not the perfect roof but it's a whole lot better than just uh, the exposed wood. It'll give it many more years of use before we have to do anything. And chances are we'll probably redo it before that happens anyway, right? Maybe. Mm -hmm. So we're up here on the ladder at the water tower and garden. Oh, out of staples. You bring me some? Yep. Take a break. I got it. 
going to want it to roll, don't want it to roll off the ladder. All right, let's get a get, go get one more rung. Ready? Okay, one more. All right, I got it. Let it on the rope. That's almost as tall as I am, babe. Okay, you can step on the ladder. You're not going to get a Darwin Award, are you? Just about. Did. <laughs> Just about did. Hey, babe. Yeah. So, are you glad you filled it full of water first? Yeah. Maybe we should have put it up here empty. <laughs> so, you probably caught this earlier. I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but the platform that the uh, tank is sitting on. This is about 4,000 pounds when it's full of water. Are two by fours that are sat on end, and they fit in the channel uh, of the um, crossbars. But you can see right there, there's lots and lots of them, all sitting on end, and then of course the tar paper on top. So this was a pretty uh, simple way to do it. Very very strong. It should have no problem uh, supporting this tank and one additional. So I got the plumbing done to the tank. Now it's time to start the old ram pump. If you guys haven't seen my video on the ram pump, I've got a two-part series on how to build a, a ram pump that will lift water, irrigate for you, do whatever, uh, with no electricity. And this is it right here, you're looking at it. This thing has been running for me for weeks and weeks, around the clock, and it just works flawless. This ram pump here is an inch and a quarter, and it's uh, pumping water about 600 feet of distance and lifting 80 feet. Yeah, 80, about 80 feet ahead with only about uh, maybe 13, 14 foot of fall from the water source. It's just incredible. I, I marvel at this thing every time I look at it and hear it running. I'll just let you guys sit here and enjoy it with me for a minute. $150 pump. You can build yourself. It'll pump 526,000 gallons of water annually if it runs 24-7. So here's my collection point here. You can see my intake pipe and a little dam. So good news, good news is I almost have the ram pump, or the water tower done. The ram pump is pumping right now, filling it up. I can't believe it. It's pumping all the way up there, no problem, a gallon a minute. And there's two inches currently in the tank. And I've got uh, two thirds of the plumbing done. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is the overflow, and I'll do that tomorrow. I'm just running out of time. But I'll show you kind of, um, let's take you in there and show you what I did. It's kind of confusing here. Uh, but what we have is we have a supply. We'll start with the supply. This three-quarter poly here, supply is coming from, right here, is coming from, excuse me, that one, uh, from the ram pump. And that pumps up here. That's three-quarter inch PVC. And then uh, we'll come around here. It's coming up. It goes right there, clear in the top, and it's cut into a T at that riser right there, and that's filling. It's filling the tank. The, uh, out, the overflow will come out of the top of that and come down, and that way when the tank is full, it will automatically kick over into the overflow and drain to an area away from the garden so it doesn't make a big mud hole right here. So the um, supply line right there is 2 inch coming right out of the tank, and the reason why I ran the 2 inch is I wanted a fire hose connection. So I have right here a nice big 2 inch gate valve. And if I need to, I'm going to have a 250 gallon water tank on my truck for my, for if we have wildland fires that I can back up on here. I'll just put a quick attach, a hose on there. I can fill up the, my tank on my truck twice really quickly without pulling a draft or anything. So that's, that's kind of a nice bonus there to the water tower. So uh, the supply the rest goes here. Now this is feeding the garden. So there's a three quarter inch uh, gate valve there. 
and that goes down here and the plumbing is I, I'm gonna bury it all it's, it's just very rudimentary I just want to make sure it's all gonna work and that's feeding the three-quarter inch poly which in turn is um, feeding our garden over here so I'm really excited you know I worked out the numbers on paper and I knew that the well according to on paper it, that the ram pump would pump up this high but you know you always kind of wonder but there it is clear up there it's just pumping away a gallon a minute should uh, have this 500 gallon tank probably pretty close to full by the morning so that's it we'll see you on the next one